for him? Paul Pullman. Well, first of all, thank you, Meta. More importantly, for your incredible leadership of Prime over all these years. But I'd like to thank all of you for what you're doing. I just came back from the US for graduation at, at uh, ceremonies at one of the colleges. And it certainly is a joy to seeing all these amazing young leaders going into the wider world. In fact, the most generous and unconditional gift is the gift of knowledge and wisdom. That's more needed now than ever. And that's exactly what you're doing. Many in positions of power are actually confused to say the least. It's not easy to be a CEO these days. Many are opting out, tenure is getting shorter. And so is life of publicly traded companies. Many pressures are underlying this and you're familiar with them. The main ones being climate change and inequality, the most burning ones. We're living well beyond our planetary boundaries. By not individually and collectively addressing them with the urgency required, symptoms now show up in many areas, pandemics, food insecurity, social tension, increased poverty, climate refugees, global governance issues, and yes, democracy eroding in many places across the world. In fact, only 12% of the Sustainable Development Goals are actually on track. It is a ticking time bomb. These challenges cannot be tackled by anybody alone anymore, nor uh, achieved if we're just trying to optimize within our current system. It simply isn't designed to deliver anymore. The linear extractive production models with limited accountability for what we call the negative externalities. Some might call it the tragedies of the commons and increasingly the commons are suffering as we all see. We're getting to the point where the cost of not acting is actually becoming higher than the cost of acting. Don't get me wrong, many are actually moving but they're simply not moving at the scale and speed which is required. So collectively, we're falling well short. Linear thinking applied to exponential problems will simply not get us there, nor perpetuating a fossil-based economy when a nature-based economy is actually required. Yes, technology helps. It always will if managed responsibly. But it also requires a drastic change in the way we do business that demands different leadership, in my opinion, at all levels. Less bad thinking or CSR, corporate social responsibility, is simply not good enough anymore. Nor is ticking the box or setting the minimum targets that you can get away with. Our book, Net Positive, How Courageous Companies Thrive by Giving More Than They Take, is much more about bringing humanity back to business as it is about creating a different style of leadership. Moving from commitments to reduce negative effects on, for example, plastics in the oceans or carbon emissions or deforestations for that matter, to a new way of thinking. A new way of thinking that is restorative, reparative, regenerative. We call it net positive. When you've overshot the planetary boundaries to such an extent, less bad is still bad and simply not good enough anymore. It's now about asking how companies can profit from solving the world's problems, not creating them. And how can we ensure that the world is truly better off because your companies are in it? I'm afraid that few can answer these questions in the affirmative. And yet, Increasingly, society expects it. Responsible companies is running a company by taking responsibility of the total impact in the world, intended or not, by ensuring that all stakeholders benefit over time and not just the shareholders, by working the broader partnerships to shift the boundaries in which we operate and thereby hopefully our behaviors as well. And it is about recognizing the delicate and difficult political realities and stresses in our multilateral systems. 
but it is our responsibility to help de-risk that, to ensure that ultimately the right long-term frameworks and policies are in place in order to make the changes needed at scale. Indeed, ultimately, it is about true leadership, putting the interest of others ahead of your own, knowing that by doing so, you are better off yourselves as well. And this is where you all come in. It's no question to me that if you want to change business, you have to change the way that business is taught. 70 million people globally take business courses one way or another. Prime's ultimate focus on creating societal and moral leaders that can help us transform to a more sustainable, equitable and inclusive society is absolutely key. It has to be in harmony also with nature and yes, future generations. Reports, surveys and research evidences an enormous leadership skill gap right now in the world between the skill sets that business actually needs and the skill sets available to make business effective, to meet future demands for a sustainable business. Too many business leaders are simply not aware or not trained or do not have the tools nor the organizational support and structure to make SDG oriented decisions. Our current leadership development is too narrow. Too many institutions are still creating the little Milton Friedmans on steroids. Now, how can we change in the limited time available to us now? Trust as a glue to partnership undoubtedly has eroded. But fortunately, that is not true for most academic institutions. How can we leverage this by more overtly embracing these challenges into our educational institutions? Like with any change of this magnitude, and frankly, this is a change at the biggest magnitude that is needed that I have seen, it is absolutely important that we all work together. So how do we create the right leaders at scale and speed? Leaders who have a broad growth mindset, looking at societal issues, not at risks, but as opportunities to create value. Who look beyond the short-termism of the quarterly red race, towards the longer term value creation, who take responsibility for their total impact in the world, intended or not, who set targets that science actually demands, not the ones that they can get away with, who can move from what we would call competitive leadership to increasingly the needed collaborative leadership. And yes, who can embrace the broader transformational partnerships that might feel uncomfortable at times. Undoubtedly, in this change, there will be winners and losers, deniers and embracers, skeptics and enthusiasts, hurdles and accelerators. But change we must. And only if we work together, the united strengths of prime in action will we be able to move at scale. The luxury of time we simply don't have anymore. We have to reach beyond the new cohorts of students and left with as well executive education, and yes, the broader alumni base, but also credibly educate and influence other leaders across other institutions. Failure to do so is simply not an option. My wife just wrote a book called Values for a Life Economy, where we consider what we value. She talks about the need to prioritize love for each other, compassion, love for the planet, and yes, let's not forget next generation. Now, many of the traditional leadership skills will always be needed, but more and more, we require leaders who are humble and human, operate with empathy and compassion, are purpose-driven, embrace the broader partnerships, and think and act for future generations as much as the planet itself. They are the system thinkers, able to drive the lasting changes that we need. Skills we frankly seem to have forgotten in many quarters. It was Nobel Prize winner Wangari Mantai from Kenya who said that in the course of history, there comes a time when humanity is called upon to shift to a new level of consciousness, 
to reach a higher moral ground. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that that time is now and that education has a key role to play to create the moral leadership at scale. Our children and their children, frankly, will be grateful for it. Thank you very much for what you are doing.